Welcome back. Welcome back. Last Saturday, a massive earthquake hit Chile. The city of Concepcion, nearest to the epicenter, about 30 miles away, saw buildings crumple and collapse in seconds. Even the capital, which thought it might have escaped, Santiago, hundreds of miles away, saw motorways torn apart. In the days since, the emergency aid efforts have been hampered by poor communications, lack of electricity, and outbreaks of looting. Chile's president, Michel Bachelet, who of course was with us a couple of months ago, is due now to leave office next week, and she's appealed for international help. And I'm joined now by Chile's ambassador to the UK, Rafael Moreno. Welcome, Rafael. Thank you, sir. Um, is um, Concepcion back under control now? I mean, is the looting over? No, no. It's finished. Uh, uh, two days, three days ago, the situation was totally under control because uh, the president of the country declared the state of uh, catastrophe and declared emergency in the area. So a uh, curfew was imposed. The military uh, were present, uh, and the police is taking care of control. So looting was totally uh, disbanded. Yes, because people were surprised, because Chile has got such a law-abiding re uh, record and so on, that people were, were going for plasma TV screens and not just food. But, but well, the problem is that uh, when we had the in the first hours, the situation was totally, let's say, out of any possibility of control. No power, no water, and so forth. And so no communication, really? No communication. Even myself, I have a sister over there. It took me four days to reestablish communication, and directly through them, because uh, power lines were down. But uh, now the situation is uh, calm. We are providing assistance to the people. Emergency is coming from uh, different places of the countries, and uh, also international aid is coming uh, in, in, in a specific uh, elements. But uh, the situation is totally under control of the government. Now. And Concepcion, though, is it's going to take years to repair the damage. Well, you know, the problem, the problem is that in 1960, we have probably the strongest earthquake in the earth in Concepcion. In the same place, we rebuild it, yeah. and uh, so that's you why you can see that uh, our earthquakes are very, very severe. But the number of killing of killed people is not so high, mm. because most of our buildings they are now they have to be built in uh, anti-seismic regulations. So the death toll uh, today, as we, as we speak, is approximately how many people? Well, officially, people that has been uh, declared death, two hundred and fifty-eight. But we have a number of people that has not been identified so far that we do have the corpse. So the number is 802. That is the total toll of people that has, including in that, in, in that number, some missing people that have been reported in the coastal uh, small towns where the tsunami hit it uh, badly. And, uh, and what about the effect on the industries of Chile, like... Uh, Copper no, and they, wine. And no, nothing. Well, of course, in the, in the wine area, uh, there are a small damage. Copper is not uh, touched. Uh, timber is not uh, affected. Salmons also, they have a different. So we are not going to suffer on that. But the problem is that uh, we, will, uh, have l we have lost a lot of infrastructure. Bridges, roads, which have to be rebuilt, uh, houses more than 500,000 uh, houses will have to be totally built again. So that will demand some kind of uh, investment from us. Uh. So, so in fact, uh, when the new president takes over, what, next week, Mr. Panera, um, he's going to have a rather tough baptism. Well, yes, he, of course, he's already been invited by the president to uh, share all the information even more, he has uh, one week earlier than assuming the government, he has nominated the governors of the, let's say, most affected areas in which they are now sitting in the committees and so forth. But he will have to, uh, let's say, be confronted in the coming three, four years with uh, the reconstruction of the country. And so, I mean, basically, you've, you've rebuilt Concepcion once already. In 1960. Uh, in 1960, as you said. Um, but how long will it take for everything to be back to normal? Five years? No, no, less than that. 
We, less. less. I, don't want, I don't want to appear that I'm um, presumption, no. But uh, in Chile, we do have a good social and, uh, a, a, let's say, institutional structures. Mm. So we know what we have to do. The first thing we have to do now is to provide basic elements to the people, potable water, medicines, and food. Then we restore the communication and we start cleaning. W Chile is a country where we have had several earthquakes in the past. Mm. M m not so catastrophic as this one because it covers a large area of the country. But uh, I, w I could assure you, sir, that in two years we will be standing up. And very importantly, the Chilean wine will be flowing again. Yes, sir. Well, it will not be a stop because the vineyards, the, the harvest is coming now in March. Yeah. So they, they have not been affected by the earthquake. Mm. So I welcome very much because in this country, we are already selling is the most important market in Europe for the Chilean wine, the United Kingdom. Well, I'm delighted to hear it, and I'm not at all surprised. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed <laughs> for Thank being with us. Thank you for inviting us. me, sir. Thank you. Thank you to you. One of the world's leading Muslim scholars has issued a fatwa, or an edict, condemning terrorists as the enemies of Islam. Dr. Muhammad Tahir al Qadri, who is the leader of the worldwide religious and educational organization Minhaj al Quran, hopes particularly to turn young Muslim men away from the path of radicalism and extremism. And we're delighted that he's here with us now. Dr. Qadri, welcome. Um, why did you choose this time to make? The, to announce the fatwa? The basic reason of choosing this time is, you know, that uh, the wave of terrorism has become very strong in Pakistan and certain other areas and other parts of the world. And they have started slaughtering the people, taking the dead bodies out of the graves and hanging on the trees and bombing everywhere. And I found that some scholars and ulama of the Muslim world instead of condemning this act of terrorism, an act of brutality, absolutely, I found them silent and speaking in double, some of them, in double speak. Yes. So this disturbed me. So I thought this is a time that I should uh, issue a fatwa, a, a jurisprudential Islamic ruling, a judgment, which should be very comprehensive, which should include all important basic evidences and arguments of Quran and traditions of Holy Prophet and classical authorities which should address all major issues or minor issues which disturb the youth on which they have been brainwashed so that the Muslim Ummah and generation and the whole world should be able to know what is the actual uh, position of Islam on terrorism. Yes. And, <coughs> and I see absolutely and it, it is as you say a very full argument 600 pages altogether. Yeah, more than 600 pages. 604 pages on this argument. On this argument. Yes. And your target here particularly is the young Muslims but who may be tempted by radicalism and violence. Yeah, definitely. Because these are young Muslims or because of their age, they are being radicalized and they are being brainwashed and uh, they become extremism, extremists. Mm -hmm. Then because of a specific ideology, then they become radicals, and then they are picked up for suicide bombings. And this was the basic phenomena, a gradual phenomena. I wanted that they should be stopped, not only the brainwashed suicide bombers, but thousands of those youth who are on the road. They have not still become suicide bombers, but they are potentials to become. They have. And they are being brainwashed. They are giving wrong interpretations of Islam and they are, giving, they are being misguided by the wrong teachings. So this is the target of the whole younger generation particularly and the whole Muslim community in general. And, uh, and in fact, the people that you hope most to change the minds of right. is, the, is the young. Is the young. Because they are growing and they growing. are learning and learning. so on. Not so much the, the, the older radicals. Older radicals will also be, uh, get benefit out of that, but main target is the young generation. Older too, because this explains the concepts of Islam. This explains what jihad is. 
This fatwa explains what is the position of Quran and Sunnah on act of terrorism. What does Islam say on rights of non-Muslims? What does Islam say on public massacre? What does Islam say on mass killings of non-combatants? What does Islam say on suicide bombing? So all these concepts which I have clarified, which the older people were also confused by wrong interpretations, so they will also get benefit out of that. So if they are also corrected, they won't be able to support them. And if the younger generation are corrected, they won't be able to become suicide bombers. And what have, what have you felt about the, the reaction so far? Have you been encouraged by the reaction or has there been a lot of opposition? I mean, has it had the reaction so far that you were hoping for? Up till today, the reaction and response which I have seen all over the world, it has encouraged me. Good. Absolutely, it has encouraged me. And it is beyond my expectations. And I am very happy that a very positive response is coming up from the Muslim Ummah and particularly from the whole of Western world. It looks that everybody is uh, assessing and observing this fatwa as if it is going to bring the peaceful atmosphere of humanity back. And we are in fact taking Islam back from the terrorists. And we want to unite the Muslim world and Western world again as a peaceful world which is based on love and tolerance and mutual understanding and peaceful atmosphere of coexistence. Everybody has encouraged. You're going to continue with this message, spreading the message of your fatwa t to everybody. Yes. Not just in Pakistan, where you're based, your organization is based, isn't it, in Pakistan, but around the world. No, organize, my organization is always, uh, its headquarters although are in Pakistan but its branches are in 90 countries all over the world. So, but I'm going to t uh, keep it moving. This, this is a movement now of de-radicalization. This is a movement of taking Islam back from Al-Qaeda and from the terrorist people. This is a movement of spreading the message of peace, message of love, message of tranquility, message of mutual understanding, message of peaceful togetherness and Coexistence. This is a great message. Which this is the purpose of my life. I think I have to continue it, and I want thousands of other scholars and voices. They should join me, so that from everywhere we may be able to remove the hatreds and biases. Well, thank you very much for being with us, and uh, we really appreciate you being with us, and uh, and the power, of, the power with which you deliver your message. Thank you very thank much, you very much Dr. Kadri. Thank you. Th thank you, John. And there, I'm afraid, we have to leave it for this week. Uh, do join us again in seven days' time for another edition of Trust Over the World.